The Theses of Agreement is a document that records how differences were sorted out so that two churches could come together to form the Lutheran Church of Australia and New Zealand. It is a record of acceptance and union. It stands under the authority of scripture and the Lutheran confessions. And while it is a historical document, the theses continue to provide guidance to our church today. The theses themselves state that they are not set in concrete, but can and should be adapted and amended when further study of God's word shows them to be inadequate. Section six of the theses deals with the ministry and the first 10 points are essentially affirmations of the ministry sections of the Augsburg Confession, which we share with the global Lutheran Church. However, for more than three decades, half its lifetime, the Church has prayerfully examined, discussed and debated two scripture passages referred to in an 11th paragraph, TA 6.11 and has not been able to agree on an interpretation that is acceptable to the whole church. While individuals may find the text to be clear, a consistent majority have indicated that they don't share this view. In 2020, a special meeting of the General Church Board and the College of Bishops publicly affirmed what has become evident over the last three decades, that within the LCANZ there are seemingly irresolvable differences on ordination and the pastorate. In distributing the report from this meeting, Bishop John Henderson voiced the thoughts of most of us when he wrote, our preferred solution is that we remain together and learn to love and accept one another. The theses of agreement actually provide a clear way forward. Theses 1.4e states that if no agreement can be reached on the clarity of certain scriptural passages, after combined prayerful examination of the passages in question, divergent views arising from such differences of opinion, when no agreement can be reached, neither viewpoint is to be taught as the public doctrine of the church. The two viewpoints remain valid theological opinions, but neither can be taught as the sole public doctrine or practice of the church. We can accept diversity in opinion and practice. In the light of the Theses of Agreement itself, Clause 611 no longer meets the definition of a public doctrine of our Church, and the removal of this clause would provide a way forward for the Church in accepting difference and maintaining unity. The St Paul's Box Hill proposal, with the support of St Stephen's Adelaide and Concordia Dun Craig, seeks an amicable end to a debate that has caused so much hurt, conflict and distress. Christ prays for the unity of the church. St Paul calls on believers to make every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And leading up to the church union in 1966, our wise forebears composed TA 1.4 as a practical way of preserving the new church in peace and unity when dissension arose over doctrinal issues. Following these directions, those who hold divergent positions on the ordination issue are asked to give ground for the sake of the gospel. Those who hold to male-only ordination are asked to understand that at this time, it cannot remain the sole position and practice of the church. While those who hold to the ordination of women and men are asked to understand that at this time, it cannot become the sole position and practice of the church. Each congregation and calling body will determine the position and practice that is in line with their theological opinion and appropriate for their own circumstances. This proposal steers the church clear of the self-destructive path of division and seeks to preserve and safeguard our God-given and God-pleasing unity.